Hello, Deadline here again. I'm continuing a series on Commodore 64 programming. In part one, I went over setting up Kick Assembler on Windows so that you can compile assembly language source code files into Commodore 64 native machine code. Also, I briefly went over transferring files over to the Ultimate 2 Plus onto a real Commodore 64 so that you can actually run the programs that you make. If you don't have an Ultimate Plus cart, you can order one from the Ultimate 64 webpage. At the time of making this video, the Ultimate 2 costs about 160 US dollars. And these are a back order item because Gideon, the maker of the carts, only makes them in batches to fill orders. But they're well worth the cost and the wait. There are a couple of other options for transferring the files besides the Ultimate 2 cart. The SD to IEC card is more readily available and they're all over eBay but they cost about 70 bucks maybe 50 or 60 somewhere in there depending on it, what kind of deal you can get then there's also a newer option the Pi 1541 and these cost around 40 US dollars but you also have to have a Raspberry Pi in order to use one they cost even less if you assemble it yourself so there's three different ways you can transfer the programs to a Commodore 64. Kick Assembler has some pretty good documentation on its website in either PDF or HTML format. I prefer the HTML version because it has the contents over to the left. I'm not going to go too in depth with going all over all the ins and outs of each opcode right now, but you should take some time and familiarize yourself with it. Uh, 6502.org is a good uh, place to learn about the opcodes. Um, the main thing to understand about the 6502 is that it can execute one opcode at a time and the opcode in conjunction with the values of the CPU registers is what make things happen. On 64, c64wiki.com, uh, that's a good resource to learn about the CPU. Um, here we see the processor status register of the CPU. And you'll notice that there's different flags on here. Then you also have a good resource is the Commodore 64 Programmer's Reference Guide and on page 213 of the Commodore 64 Programmer's Reference Guide it talks about the registers in the 6510 microprocessor. Now you may be wondering what 6502 has to do with 6510. Well the 6510 is what they put in Commodores and it's fully compatible with the 6502 but it also allows for bank switching so understanding these basic concepts of the CPU registers and the op codes is going to come in handy going forward while we dive into the source code okay so let's get started with some programming. We're going to do a uh, simple hello world program. Now first thing we're going to want to do is put in the basic upstart and it's done with putting memory address and a star equals 801 hex and then basic Upstart. This is a kick similar macro that they built in. Makes it quite easy to create the basic upstart. So we've had the basic upstart at 0810 hex and then start a memory location 0810. 
Um, let's start by uh, putting, um, let's load X with dollar string. Uh, put the number in there that indicates that you're putting a, a number, not a memory location. And let's put a FF in there, which is 255 decimal. And then let's create a, a loop to, uh, comment, uh, not a comment, but a, what do you call it? A label, a loop label. Let's increment the X register that we just loaded, and now we'll flip it over to zero. And we'll load the accumulator with hello world, comma X. Not season, but X. Okay. And we'll jump subroutine, dollar string, FFD2. And that is the kernel routine for printing out character to a screen and so now we're going to branch if not equal to the loop and that's going that's going to compare what's in the accumulator if it's zero or not and then we'll return from subroutine and you'll see what I mean by the branch if not equal where it compares. We'll create the hello world label here. Put a text and with hello world and then a dot byte zero. Yep. And this is the zero that's going to end the loop here if it if it's equal to zero then it will let it pass and then it will just return from subroutine so hopefully I typed in everything fine and let's give it a test yep there it is right on the screen hello world Okay, so now that we got the hello world going, let's do something a little bit crazy. Let's go back to this top. Let's clear the screen. So let's load accumulator with um, hex value of 93. And that is the clear screen character. And Commodore um, Petsky 2 tables. I'm going to jump to subroutine FFD2 hex. Uh, maybe I should label this stuff. And this is the kernel char out. And that will clear the screen. But let's say, let's say we want to put some colors in there too with it. So this screw this RTS will move it down because we don't want to return from subroutine just yet let's put in actually let's start down here add another label and call it color table and then we're going to put dot byte and then Let's go dark gray gray comma light gray comma white comma light gray comma gray comma dark gray uh, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's less than what we have for our characters. So we need some more. So let's go blue on the end. Seven, eight, nine. 
<clears throat> yellow, 10, 11, and let's just end it with a white and then a zero. Well, <clears throat> I'll take the zero off. Let's count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That should cover it. So we have twelve for our color table. Oh, let's go back to the top real quick. <clears throat> let's change the background color. Load the accumulator with zero. Actually, let's use the built-in um, kick of similar constants. And black is one of them. And it equals zero. But for readability, it makes it easier. Color color black okay and we'll store the accumulator at dollar sign d020 and also at d021 that is the background and border color of the Commodore <clears throat> so now if we just run this as it is it's just going to print a a blue hello world so yeah although you see that it did a gray color and not a black and the reason for that is because we didn't put a number a hash in front of the black to indicate that we want the value black to be loaded into the accumulator and not the value of the address zero if that makes any sense okay so that's a little bug that we just fixed so let's just run that again real quick and just see yep that was what it was okay now to implement our colors down here we're going to put in a load X. Let's load the X register with zero. Remember, put that hash in there. Otherwise, you're going to get the value of memory location zero, and that's not what you want. <clears throat> Then we're going to put another loop label here because we're going to be looping back up to it. And now we're going to load the accumulator with color table, comma X. X would be your offset. <clears throat> of color table. All right. And we're going to store the accumulator at, let's see, what is the address for the BIC color memory? Color memory, color memory, where are you at? Okay, here it is. D800. Okay. So we're going to store that at D. We store the accumulator at D800. And we're going to also put an X on the end. Because we want to move that along. It's going to start at D800. But it's going to also add X to where it stores it. Okay. All right, so the next step is increment the X register. Uh, 
and we're going to this time we're going to do it different we're going to compare x with 12 and the reason why is because we don't want to put a zero in on the end of a color table because zero is black in a color table so we're going to need to know the exact number and 12 is the exact number so compare x with 12 and if it's not equal to that then we're going to go back to loop 2 and then return from subroutine so let's see if that works yep there it is you put some color in there with a color table it's pretty neat stuff all right well I guess we'll wrap this one up okay so there you have it we um, did a hello world program we changed the background colors and also put in a color table to change the VIX color memory now I've also added a github repository where I'm going to be storing all this um, the source code from these videos that I do so you can go there and download it um, let me know what you guys think and I think for the next video uh, we'll cover the cities and bouncy sprites that's going on up there in the background well, until next time.